Today, we are discussing the life and times of Lucius Cornelius Scipio Barbatus, one of Rome's consuls in the year 298. The Cornelii Scipiones, one of Rome's most renowned patrician families, first appeared in Roman history by name just after 400 BCE. The first figure from that family to leave an indelible and detailed impression on the historical record is Lucius Cornelius Scipio Barbatus, who was active and prominent in public affairs from the time that he was consul in 298 until his death around 280. Much of Barbatus's fame stems from the fact that he was a successful commander in a time of war between Rome and its enemies in Italy, which ultimately culminated in Roman dominance between the Toe of Italy and the Po River by 265. Most of what we know about Barbatus's career comes specifically from the period between 298 and 295, when Barbatus was active first as a consul in command and then as a subordinate general under his successors in the Republic's highest annual office. When Barbatus was first elected, Rome was at war with the Etruscans. Prior to 298, the Etruscans were making preparations to renew their struggle with the Romans. However, unfortunately for the Etruscans, a large force of Gauls invaded their territory before they could initiate hostilities against Rome. The Etruscans wanted to recruit the Gauls as allies in their war effort, but the Gauls instead accepted payment to depart from Etruria. Livy's text seems to suggest that the Gauls were theoretically willing to join the Etruscan war effort, but that they were looking for a larger payout for their services than what the Etruscans could afford to provide. This forced the Etruscans to go it alone, now with less money. When Barbatus and his consular colleague Gnaeus Fulvius Maximus Quintumatus assumed office, a second conflict broke out when the Senate voted to help aid the Lucanians against the Samnites. When the two men took lots, the war against the Etruscans fell to the patrician consul Barbatus, while his colleague was sent to fight what would become known as the Third Samnite War. The war that Scipio Barbatus inherited had been going on for at least a year and had seen two previous commanders, the first of whom committed suicide following a painful and presumably crippling fall from a horse during a training exercise. The respected Valerius, who was temporarily considered for the office of dictator, was elected consul and prosecuted the war against Etruria. Valerius's invasion succeeded in laying waste to the lands of the Etruscans, but did not bring about a decisive battle, which was what the Romans were hoping for. The army that Barbatus inherited was presumably smaller than Valerius's due to the new conflict that the Senate had decided to embark upon with the Samnites. It isn't too surprising that the Etruscans preferred to fight a lesser known commander in Scipio with a smaller army than the famous Valerius and his fuller army. When Barbatus' army entered Etruscan territory, the Etruscans met the Romans near the city of Volterrae and commenced battle. The battle lasted all day and resulted in heavy casualties on both sides. Barbatus fully expected that the resolution of the battle would require a second day of fighting. However, the Etruscans had abandoned their camp and uh, by night and left behind a great deal of loot. Barbatus then followed up his victory by continuing his depredation of Etruscan lands while avoiding attacking or besieging the cities of Etruria. When news arrived of Roman victories over the Samnites that same year, the Etruscans seemed to have abandoned hope and reached a peace agreement by the next year, 297. The Battle of Volturi was not one of the great milestones in Rome's rise to dominance, but it is still very important in the context of the Third Samnite War, since it gave the Romans a respite of one year from having to fight a two-front war, the dangers of which would be revealed in the next few years. The next year, the Romans elected Quintius Quintus Fabius Maximus and Decius Mus as consuls. Both consuls were assigned to lead their armies against the Samnites and Barbatus became a legate in Maximus's army. Fabius Maximus's army campaigned in the north of Samnite territory, whereas Maximus Mus, or Decimus Mus, excuse me, was in the southern portion of the Samnite territory. Fabius foiled an attempted Samnite ambush, which then developed into traditional battle at Tifernum in 297. As the battle continued to drag on indecisively, Fabius eventually ordered Barbatus to take the Triarii from the rear of the Roman maniples and to lead them around the hills to attack the enemy flank. When the Samnites saw Barbatus's force appear, they mistakenly assumed that this was the army of Decimus Mus, not knowing that he was far to the south. 
The Samnites abandoned the field, thus leaving behind many standards and granting the Romans a hard-won but indecisive victory. In 296, the Senate granted Fabius and Moose six months of proconsular command against the Samnites whilst electing two new consuls. A great Samnite leader, Gellius Ignatius, managed to enlist the aid of the Etruscans and the Lucanians to revitalize the Samnite war effort. Things got dicey for the Roman cause as the armies of Fabius and Moose were not given resources or reinforcements since Ignatius tried to attack Rome itself while another enemy army attacked Campania. Barbatus's activities are not known for certain during this year's campaign, but he was most likely still serving under Maximus in Samnium at the time. The Romans won a costly victory against their attackers only to see Ignatius raise another coalition in the north, this time including Gallic mercenaries. Although exhausted, the Romans decided to call up all of their available manpower and seek a decisive battle. In 295, Fabius was elected consul for the fifth time, and contrary to the usual practice, he demanded and received the command against Ignatius rather than leaving it to the gods to decide his assignment by lot. During the campaign, Barbatus served as one of the four legion commanders under Fabius. The decisive battle occurred at Centinium, or Centinum, where the Romans and their allies defeated the Samnite-led alliance in perhaps Rome's greatest battle prior to the Punic Wars. Of the 40,000 Romans deployed at Centinum, 8,700 were killed in action. Yet, this was a great Roman victory and the Samnite-led alliance lost even more men. After the battle, the Samnites were abandoned by all of their allies. The Third Samnite War dragged on for five more years, and the Romans eventually emerged victorious. Scipio Barbatus' descendants were also important players in Roman history. Two of his sons became consuls, and one of them, Scipio Asina, was interesting enough to earn himself a spot in the series for reasons that will become evident in due time. Scipio Barbatus's great-grandson, Scipio Africanus, was the Colossus of the Middle Republic period and arguably the greatest general in Roman history. As for Barbatus himself, his last known activity was when he held the censorship, Rome's highest office and one that only emerged about every 10 years or so, in the year 280. Uh, we don't really know any details of his tenure in that office, only that he held it. So with that, there's really nothing more to say about Scipio Barbatus. It is pretty safe to say, however, that he did quite a bit to put his family on the map as a major, major player in Roman affairs and not just another relatively random patrician clan. So next time we will talk about another Roman and I plan on doing this series sort of out of order, just whatever order I feel like doing it because that's more fun for me.